fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Benny Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Did you ever go shopping for groceries with your mom and pass something that looked so good you just had to ask her to get it? Mmm, like those Betty Crocker cake mixes with pictures of all the delicious cake flavors on the packages? You look at them and you want mom to bake up every one. For instance, Betty Crocker's white cake mix. Why, that bakes up into the highest, lightest, best-tasting white cake ever. A real lick-the-plate kind of cake. And all Mom has to do is add water and the whites of two fresh eggs for a perfect cake every time. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. Every Betty Crocker cake mix comes out perfect. And mmm, what flavors! There's yellow cake, chocolate devil's food, honey spice or gingerbread, angel food, marble cake, and Betty Crocker's two newest, chocolate malt and peanut delight. And of course, there's Betty Crocker's popular brownie mix, too. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Hooray! Old Ed Andrews lived with his nephew, Frank Adams, and his wife, Laura, at the Circle A Ranch. When he had first gone to live there, Uncle Ed, as he was called, was of some use as a handyman. But as he grew older, his usefulness came to an end and he spent his time in idle whittling while he told stories of his fancied exploits to Frank and Laura's little girl, Betsy. Yep. Reckon you should have known your Uncle Ed when I was in the prime, Betsy. You're not afraid of anything, are you? Well, not often. Did I ever tell you about when I fought in the Battle of Vicksburg? No, tell me. Well, we were in a shallow trench facing the enemy and fighting like all get out. Then I saw our captain run forward. He fell right near the enemy lines, wounded. I hopped out of that trench in a jiffy, ran forward with bullets flying all around me, picked him up and carried him back to safety. You're awfully brave, Uncle Ed. Oh, I... uh oh here's your morning, Paul. Uncle Ed, how many times do I have to tell you about whistling in the house? Look at that mess on the floor. What's the matter with you? Do we always have to be yapping at you about things? By Jiminy, I never thought, Frank. You see, I got talking to Betsy. Uncle Ed was telling me about the time he saved his captain during the war. And Tommy he... Ross. Betsy, go outside and play. We want to talk to Uncle Ed alone. Yes, Mama. Frank, I won't have you telling those fantastic tales to Betsy. Well, now, there's no harm in telling her about things I did, Laura. Frank and I talked it over on the way home from town. Your room is always a mess. And you dirty the floors with that whittling in spite of all that we see. Uncle Ed, we're fixing up the shed out back for you to live in. Uh, but that shed used to be a chicken house. It'll do uh, for shelter after Laura puts a cot in there and cleans it up. You can get your grub in the kitchen at mealtime. But, Frank... No uh, buts about it. It's all set. You'll move out there tomorrow. <laughs> That same day, in a hideout cabin in the hills, an escaped convict, Alex Mott, and two companions looked up as the door opened. Oh, here's Lefty. I found out something in town, Alex. Don't you hombres might be interested. Yeah, what is it? 
The rancher named Adams was in the bank with his wife. They drove home to the Circle A spread carrying payroll cash. Hey, we could use that cash right now. Yeah, we sure could, Alex. I've heard of the Circle A. Big spread. A lot of hands. I found out tomorrow's payday out there. That cash ought to be around the ranch house tonight. Good. We'll wait till it's dark. Then we'll go there and try to grab it. That night, Frank and Laura were alone in the living room of the ranch house when... I wonder who that is. One of the hens, most likely. Now reach, mister. What? Come on, men. Jake, you wait outside. Right. What's the meaning of this? Get over there by the woman. Frank, don't let them order you around like that. You men get right out of Shut here. Shut up, I'll you. T- Tie them up, Muggs. All right. Won't Frank. take long. <laughs> In a few moments, Frank and Laura were tied to chairs. Then Alex Mott asked, Where's the cash? The payroll cash? Don't know what you're talking about. Tell me! You stop that! Gag that female, somebody. With pleasure. Get away! There. Now she'll keep quiet. Now, mister, we mean business. Either you tell us where that cash is, or you can... Frank! Laura! What? Cover that old coot! Come in here, you. Great day robber. Tie him up, too. Right. Ooh. Either you yell out, you'll get plugged. Now, tell us where that cash is, mister. Better tell him, Frank. They look plenty mean. Well, at least we know for sure there's cash here. Now, speak up, you. It's in a cigar box. Bottom drawer of a chest over there. Get it, Lefty. Right. I got it. Good. I'll gag these two, then we'll get out of here. Help me, Mark. Sure. Hey! The riders are coming into the trail. Must be some of the cowboys. We're ready. The horses are out back. Let's go. Five minutes later, the foreman and some of the ranch hands hurriedly entered. Boss, we looked through the wind and saw you all tied up. Have you loose in the jiffy? Yes, It took but a few moments to loosen the gags and rope. Laura, enraged, immediately turned on old Uncle Ed. You talkative old fool. Frank Hennam believing there wasn't any cash here when you opened your big mouth. Gosh, Laura, I didn't know. I think it was better to give him the cash than to have him use the gun. You figured, you figured. Forget it, Laura. Tex, you get the rest of the men ready to ride. Have someone go for the sheriff. Four crooks took the payroll cash, close to 2,000. We'll get after him right away. Tell the sheriff to follow with a posse. All right, boss. Let's go, man. All right, come on. At dawn the following morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto prepared to leave their camp in the hills where they had spent the night. Alex Mott's trail led us to this territory, Tonto. Yeah. The ranch house robbery you heard about in town last night might have been the work of Mott and his pals. Uh, me think that. We'll search the hills for their hideout. I saw the posse heading back toward town just as dawn broke. I hope we have better luck than they had. All right, let's go. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, easy, fella. Monster! Come on, come on. That morning at the Circle A Ranch House, Frank, who had returned from the fruitless hunt with his men, went to awaken Uncle Ed. A moment later, he returned to the living room. Laura, look here. Oh, what is it? A note pinned to Uncle Ed's pillow. I didn't think. What does it say? Now listen. Dear folks, you say I'm old and useless, so reckon it's better for all of us if I just ease off and live by myself. Don't like the idea of sleeping in an old chicken house anyhow. It'll stick. Yeah. Listen. When I came here, I told you I was used to riding. I could have rode the range and give some of those young cowpokes plenty of advice, but you put me to doing chores. And I reckon bringing in wood and taking out swill ain't what I aim to end up with. I'm taking the old sorrel that Frank gave me to keep. Tell Betsy I sure will miss her, and I say God bless her. Your Uncle Ed. That's just what I expect from him. After all we've done for him... Taking him in, feeding him and all. Imagine him riding the ring. Mama, I heard. Isn't Uncle Ed going to be with us anymore? No, thank goodness. 
But I don't want him to go away. Here, enough of that. No sniveling over that no good old man. He's not a no good old man. He's good and brave and... I want Uncle Ed back. I want him to come back. Betsy, honey. Let her go. She'll get over it. Your uncle is gone, and that's that. And I'm relieved and glad that we don't have to put up with him anymore. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Sailor Sam is the smartest boy who ever shouted ship a high. He can weather any storm that blows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Good old Cheerios. They got go. So nourishing because they're made from oats with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Uncle Ed on a sway-backed sorrel horse left the Circle A ranch with an old carpet bag strapped behind his saddle and rode into the hills. In spite of his determination to make his own way, he felt old and useless after the constant nagging he had received from Frank and Laura. The morning turned out to be hot and the trail dusty. He had turned onto an unused trail and finally saw a spiral of smoke coming from a hollow. Oh, oh, uh, must be a cabin down yonder. Reckon I can get him to give me some water. Get up, Brownie. Get going, boy. In their hideout cabin, Alex and his pals heard hooves approaching. They quickly grabbed their guns. Somebody found a trail here. Hey, look, through the window. It's the old man we tied up last night. What? Riding here openly. We'll wait and see what he does. Yeah. Hey, look at him. He's coming to the door. I'll let him in. Well? Uh, say, mister, could you... Jump in, Jehoshaphat. You were one of the crooks that came to the ranch last night. Right, old timer. Come on in. No, no, thanks. Reckon I'll just mosey all about my business. Come inside and be quick about it. Sure, sure. <laughs> Who's with you? Nobody. You see, I'm sort of running away, you might say. Tie him up. We'll decide what to do with him later. All right, Alex. And Lefty. Yeah? You go out and watch the trail into the hollow. This might be a trick. If anyone else comes along, use your gun. Right. The Lone Ranger and Tonto spent most of the morning searching the hills for the crook's hideout. Finally, Tonto pointed to the trail, saying, Look, King Osabi. They're fresh tracks. One horse going through hills. Maybe if one of crooks go to hide out alone. We'll follow the tracks and find out. Come on, Phil. Get him up to the top. A light wind was blowing toward them as they started up a rise. The great horse Silver caught the scent of a man and a horse. The intelligent animal whinnied a low warning. <laughs> who's who's, who's, who's down? Oh, come on. Oh. Silver gave a warning, Toto. Ah. Maybe someone waiting near trail. We'll dismount and leave the horses hidden in a tall brush. Then we'll move forward on foot. Easy, steady, big fella. Scout, easy. Now we'll leave this trail and keep to the brush and trees. There's someone ahead waiting. We must take him by surprise. Crook Lefty sat on a boulder smoking a cigarette while he watched the trail. Suddenly, a strong arm encircled his neck from behind and closed his throat with pulling force. Do not make sound. Just keep you quiet. 
Now we'll tie him. Uh-huh. Head for the cabin there in the hollow. That must be the hideout. Uh-huh. He'll soon be tied. We'll approach through the brush. I'll go to the front. You come up behind the cabin. I think we've found Alex Mott and his gunman. Later in the cabin, Uncle Ed, tied to a chair with its back toward the stove and facing the door, observed Alex and his two pals through half-lowered eyelids. Alex was saying, Oh, Coot looks half gone already. Before we go tonight, we'll stuff a gag in his mouth and leave him here to starve. <laughs> Won't take long for him to die off. Well, let's get that breakfast going. On one side of the cabin stood a large pot-bellied stove in which the crooks had built a fire to cook breakfast. Though the back and side windows of the cabin were open, it was still quite warm. Alex walked to the stove, then said, This stuff's ready to eat. I'll dish it up. At that moment, the front door burst open. Hey, hey, hey a mess, man. I'm in it. it. Oh, what was? You broke gun. Me at back window. Jake was trapped between the guns of the masked man and Indian. But Alex, shielded from Tonto by the stove, suddenly crouched down behind Uncle Ed's chair, saying, Wait, Jake, keep your gun. Mister, tell your friend at the back window to come inside. If you don't, I can plug you from behind the old man. Let me come in. Now, masked man, drop your guns. Drop them. If you fire at me, you'll hit the old fella. While the Lone Ranger hesitated a moment, Uncle Ed suddenly went into action. Pushing hard with his feet, he toppled his chair backward. Don't drop your guns, mister. Hey, what? Oh! Alex was knocked off balance and thrown back against the hot stove. As he frantically moved away from the blistering iron stove, the Lone Ranger fired. I'll get him. Drop it. Oh. Well, we got them all. Uh, my hand. Old man oh. in chair move oh. 20 pounds. Hey, who you calling an old man? Otto, that's Ed Andrews. That's right. Get me untied, mister. Watch those cooks, Otto. Uh-huh. Out for you, Ed. <laughs> there. By Jiminy, you and turn to our sights for sore eyes, mister. I heard you'd gone to live with relatives. Huh. You ought to meet him sometime. These crooks robbed my nephew last night. Frank Adams is your nephew? Yeah, but don't go passing the news around. Only one I care a hoot about is his daughter, 10-year-old Betsy. I sure hated to leave because of her. Leave? What do you mean? How did you get here? Briefly, Ed told the Lone Ranger all that had happened. When he finished, the masked man said, Ed, did you ever tell them you'd been decorated for bravery by the Army? Or that you used to be a fine sheriff down in Pecos? Oh, never liked to brag about myself. Used to tell Betsy about my experiences, but Laura and Frank said I was making it up. Oh, here comes the sheriff and his posse, and Frank is with them. Hold on, hold on now. These armories just captured Alex Mott and his crooked pals. Yep, they saved my life, too. They help the law, Sheriff. This paper will identify me, Sheriff. Holy smoke. So that's who you are. Glad to meet you. Men, these two armies are friends, like Uncle Ed says. We might not have captured the crooks if it hadn't been for Ed Andrews. He made it possible. Hey, I don't savvy this. Uncle Ed couldn't do anything. He's too old to He do may it. be too old for chopping wood and doing other ranch chores, Adams. But he's not too old to use his experience in better ways. If you don't mind, I'd like to ride back to your ranch and talk to you and your wife. Well, it's all right with me. I'll have these crooks tied up, and we'll have your wife identify them, too, Frank. Uh, You'll find the stolen cash on Alex Mott, Sheriff. I saw him take it. He took it out of the cigar box on the table. Uh, Good. And let's get started back. We found one hombre on the trail tied. I left a man to guard him. Then we heard the shooting and came here. Let's go. Later at the ranch house, the sheriff, Frank, Laura, and Uncle Ed listened as the Lone Ranger talked. Frank, your uncle is a very brave man. Among many other acts of bravery, he was decorated during the war for saving his captain's life under fire. Well, is that the truth? Of course it's the truth. I I got the medal to prove it. Before that, Ed was sheriff in Pecos and did a fine job. Though he was middle-aged, he left to join the army when the war started. He has a reputation as a brave soldier and a fearless lawman. I'm surprised you didn't know. I tried to tell him a few things about myself, but 
Well, they thought I was telling tall tales. Uncle Ed! Uh, Uncle Ed, you came back! Yes, honey, yes. But just for a short talk, you might say. But you have to stay. You have to. Uh, I was listening outside the door and heard everything. I knew you were brave. I knew it. He really is, Betsy. You have every right to be proud of your Uncle Ed. I sure hate to leave you, honey. Wait, Uncle Ed. You don't have to leave. If you can overlook the past, you can stay on here. And live in a chicken house? No, sir. Oh, oh, I'm so ashamed, Uncle Ed. Of course you won't live there. You'll have your old room back. Please, Uncle Ed, please, for my sake. Well... All right. But uh, I was hoping to get a job right in the range. You know, I'm not as old as your ma and pa seem to make me out to be. Uncle Ed, you can do just what you want to do here from now on. I think you should stay, Ed. Your folks understand now. And uh, what's more, you'll have money of your own. There's a reward for the capture of Alex Mott. It will be yours. Uh $1,000. $1,000. By Jiminy, I reckon things are going to be better after all. Oh, I'll stay, Betsy. And I'll buy you a pony, too. Oh, Uncle Ed, I love you. Oh, I love you. <laughs> and you think our uncle was decorated for bravery. And he'll be a hero around here, catching those crooks and all. Tonto and I'll leave now, Ed. I know you'll be happy from now on. Adios, everybody. Bye. Bye. See you later, Sheriff. Sheriff, who is that masked man? Laura? He's an hombre who's a good friend to have. Uncle Ed is a mighty lucky man to know him so well. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time. <laughs>